So the other day I posted on my Facebook page some of these prints that I did over the weekend and quite a few wanted a tutorial. Well, let me preface this by telling you that this is the first time I've ever done this. <laughs> so what I have to share with you um, it may be very limited, but I still got a result that I liked. Um, those of you that have done this before, try not to roll your eyes when I give bad advice. Again, I've only done this one time. So, um, and these are some of the prints I got. These are from, most of them I remember what they were, because I got all these from my yard. And this was from Leaves from a Crepe Myrtle. This was from my hydrangeas. I'm not sure how this is going to show up on the video. The pictures looked pretty good. <laughs> um, this was a sweet gum tree. This is also flowers from a crepe myrtle. This one, um, I don't remember. It may come to me. Let me put that to the side. Let me see. This again were some of the leaves that came off of the crepe myrtle, but they were pretty fuzzy. So some worked, some did not. I have one of those uh, magnolia trees that here in the area where I live, they call them tulip trees because it's that pinkish, purplish flower that looks more like a tulip than a magnolia and that's what this is this is the leaves I don't have any blossoms right now but this is the leaf from that plant this was from a bouquet of flowers that were given to me I believe this is called a cock comb or a comb cock or I don't remember what it's called I'm not sure what this is called um, I have it written down I'll superimpose it. This one was from leaves from the hydrangea. The leaves didn't do too too much either. The flowers didn't, nor nor the leaves, but oh well. These are the leaves from the hydrangea. I have an evergreen uh, bush that in my yard and it has these little sprouts on it and that's what these are here. I have what's called a hyacinth bean vine and these are the leaves to the vine and these are the hyacinth flowers. Now this was kind of unusual in that the flower was pink and when it did its magic it turned blue. And this is a Rose of Sharon. These are from also my gum tree and then some more of the flowers from the hyacinth bean. These are some more from the Magnolia one, Crepe Myrtle, and this was from a lilac bush that I have. Okay, now like I said, this is the first time I did it. I had a little history behind it was about two years ago I was investigating this process along with the dyeing of the fabric. So about a year ago I did the fabric one with my different plants in my yard and it was a bust. Nothing happened, it didn't work. I got discouraged so I didn't do it anymore. Well I live in the part of the country where fall comes a little bit late. This is mid-September and I still have everything blooming. And I thought well if I'm going to try this again, let me do it on paper uh, before the seasons are over when I you know, before I don't have any plants at all. So that's why I decided to do it now and why I decided to do it on paper. The kind
kind of paper that I used is watercolor paper and I used the 140 pound only because that's what I had. Um, it wasn't like I bought it for this project. It's what I had on hand and I had the 11 by 15. So what I did to make those sizes of pages is I basically cut these in half to create the page and all I did was I tore it because I like that kind of an edge and it didn't have to be exact so that's what I did Then all I did after that was simply fold it in half. Now for those of you that aren't familiar with watercolor paper, there is a side that is smooth and a side that has a texture that's kind of rough. So when I created these, when I put the leaves in, I folded it so that the one with the texture is in the inside and I laid the flowers on the texture part. No particular reason, that's just what I did. So <laughs> I can't give you an explanation why. I'm just repeating uh, to you what I did because I ended up with a result. You may end up with just as good or a better result with the other one, the other way with the uh, putting the flowers on the on the smooth side. So you could probably test it out, do every other one and see what, if anything different happens. But for this particular attempt, I'm just going to do it the way it worked last time just so that we can have some results. I might do one the opposite way and then we can share that result. Let's follow one that way. Smooth edge, the smooth is in the inside on this one. Alright. And then I just used, a, if you have a bone folder, whatever you have, just to kind of smooth it out. Alright. So those are all done and ready for the flowers to be put in. And let me get those. Now, it probably won't fit in the frame. <laughs> My particular camera, I can't zoom out any more than I am right now. So, um, let's see how much we can get in there. But, probably you can see most of it. So, I'm going to take these and then I'm going to sandwich them into my pages that I've already folded. Now, this particular one here... I won't go through all of them, but I will show you a few that were a little unique. This is the one that turned blue. Now see, this is drying, and you can see I'd never noticed until I did the dyeing that it does turn blue when it gets, when it dries out. So I'm sure that has something to do with why when I boiled these, they, um, they turned blue. It's um this came from that. <laughs> so you just don't know. You, you have no idea. You can pick your flowers, but it doesn't mean that it's even gonna resemble doesn't even mean it's going to resemble the cult that you put there. That's the fun part. That's what's fun about it. You just don't know what you're going to get. So let's put that there. And we'll put some of the leaves from that particular plant. I put some up, some down to see what the results are. And it looks pretty if you extend it past so your eye goes from end to end. So 
So it may look a little haphazard once you're done, but if you do a little planning, it does make a little difference. So I'm going to take this dead one off and put it there and see what happens. See if it changes even more now that it's already blue. Maybe it'll turn pink. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, so that's what I'm going to I'm going to finish that one off right there. And then I'm just going to set it to the side and then go on to the next one. Now, I've already done a crepe myrtle. I did, let me show you. I did a pink crepe myrtle, which did all those really dark, dark colors. But I also have a red one in my yard. So this time, I'm also going to try a red one. And this particular one has little berries on it that the other one didn't. So I'm not sure what it's going to do, but I'm sure it'll be fun. So let's just put this by itself, because it's the first time I'm doing this one. And we'll know definitely that whatever shows up all came from the crepe myrtle. Now, when I put these together, I alternate the fold so that when I finally get all of the bunch together, it's not, you know, wonky to one side. So as you're stacking these, just go ahead and do the fold on every other side. Just a suggestion. All right. Here is, I did the hydrangea before, and all I did is, on that one, they were a little drier, but I just tore some of the leaves on there, and it came out kind of ghosty. It was kind of cute like that. I like how it came out. So let's do one more like that. Now, the reason I say this is my version <laughs> is because there are some versions of doing these books where they tell you you have to prepare the paper with different things. And there's some others where you're supposed to soak the leaves, so they're kind of preparing the leaves. And others say don't do it. There was just so many you know, different information out there. I think that's why it took so long to do it. I felt kind of frustrated because I, there was just, you know, they were sort of opposite each other telling you what to do. I'm assuming if you followed one person's advice, you'd get one look. They probably all work, but the look was different, and I just didn't know what I wanted to do. So like I say, I got frustrated and decided not to do anything. So when I finally decided to do it, I said, I'm going to do the least effort involved because it may not work. So the least effort was do nothing to the paper, do nothing to the plants, and just throw them in the water. And that's basically what I did. And I don't know, I kind of like the way they came out. So I'm just going to do that again. Now you can do some research and and follow some of the others examples of what to do and then you can let me know if it works <laughs> I'm too lazy to try it <laughs> and to tell you the truth okay now this here is the lilac tree well it's supposed to be a lilac bush but I'm it's fifth now it's almost like 15 feet tall, so I guess I'll call it a tree. <laughs> when I bought it, it said it was a bush. <laughs> so, of course, I planted it in the wrong area. But let's go ahead. And put that in there. Let's just fill that one up. I don't know if you can see it, but I got little little spiders and bugs running all over the place. If you're squeamish with your bugs, <laughs> you, you might have a heart attack doing this. Now, for those of you that don't have a yard of your own or live in the part of the country where, you know, you're more in the city, 
you know, you can always go down to a park or you can go down to your local florist and ask them, you know, when do you throw out your flowers? Do you mind if, you know, I come and get some? And then you'd have a really wide, beautiful variety. Because after they start to wilt, they're no good to the florist. But for this project, it's no problem. You know, you can still use them. So that might be an option for you that don't have a garden of your own. Okay, here's the crepe myrtle flower, the pink one that I used once before. I'll use this again. I like the way it came out. Now I didn't I didn't use the pods to the hyacinth bean. So I decided to get some of the pods and see what will happen. I have some more somewhere. See what will happen. And then I saw that there were some leaves that were some eat, were eaten up by some bugs. You know me, I love my bugs. So I decided, let's see if this makes a really cool design. So let's put that there. And let's see what happens with the bug infested. <laughs> see, you even get some pretty stuff from bugs. You get a bad rap. All right. Now I also have this other plant. Now I don't know how it's pronounced. I'll pronounce it the way it looks. <laughs> it's in the Wagalia. Family. I know someone out there is going to correct me, and that's okay because I know I'm probably saying it wrong. But there are a lot of different colors and a lot of different plants, and the one that I happen to have has these purple flowers. So let's see what becomes of this one. And let's put a couple of the leaves. No, I'll put the leaves in another one. Let's just keep that one simple like that. Oops. Yeah, be careful because sometimes this stuff falls out. And let's just put, without the flowers, we'll put the leaves of the Legalia here. About the only other new one that I have that I didn't do before is I have some cannas and they're still blooming. They bloom until the first frost in my area. So I thought I would try one of them and see just the flower part. You can put them in there kind of bulky, but make sure, you know, something can flatten because the more they flatten, the more they'll disperse the dye on your paper. So. And let's see what just the leaf does. Well, that's not going to work. Let's just put some pieces like that. Flatten these out if 
flatten a little bit. Oh, there's stuff inside. Oh. Seed. Oh, how cool. See, I always just get the the root ball of this. I didn't. I've never seen the seeds. I've never done this. <laughs> okay, people, if you want to find the seeds, there they are. And for those of you that already knew and are laughing at me, I can handle a good joke. <laughs> All right. So the rest of these are pretty much a repeat of what I've already showed you, so I will just fast forward. All right, so this one is the one we're going to test with the smooth surface. And I'm putting the sweet gum um, tree leaves only because I know that they really put a lot of color. So, um, and I know what it's supposed to look like because I did those before. So we'll put that there and see the difference, if there's a difference between using the smooth side or if we use the, the one with the texture. That'll be a good test. Alrighty, so I will be right back to show you the next step. Now, um, look at this, it looks a little bit like some kind of a torture chamber, I realize. But everything here is necessary for me, at least. <laughs> okay. Okay, first of all, I went to a junk shop and got me a pot. Because obviously, you are not going to use your pots that you used to cook in. <laughs> so that was the first step. I got just a plain old aluminum pot. Again, the research I did, if you use this kind of pot, this happens. You use this, that happens. I couldn't, I couldn't figure it all out. So what I ended up doing is I just got the cheapest one on the list of the pots that they recommend. The, the ones that know that what they're doing, uh, they all recommend a copper pot because obviously the copper releases and does some kind of chemical stuff with your plants and so on and so forth. But again, I didn't know if any of this was going to work, so I just got the cheapest pan that was a dollar. <laughs> and kind of thick. I didn't want it so thin that it would burn or anything. This is not really burnt. That's just from all the colors that came out. Okay, so you start off with a pot big enough to accommodate the sizes of the uh, papers that you're going to put in. Now, you're going to sandwich, hold on a second, you are going to sandwich these papers onto something that is flat, stable, and that can handle being submerged in water and boiled to death. <laughs> so a lot of suggestions that I read was to use wood or you could use tiles, like floor tiles, um, and depending how thick your, your batch is, they had suggested that you can 
put one tile on the bottom and then if you have a brick you can put the brick on the top. The point is you want to smash this as tight and flat as possible, bottom line, so that when the natural dyes start to release, obviously they're going to go directly to the paper as opposed to just flowing out into the water. So you want to try and have it as flat as possible. I chose wood only because that's what I already had, so I wasn't too worried uh, about looking for anything else. Okay, so after I put this like this, I'm thinking, alrighty, <laughs> now how am I going to keep this flat? Because I didn't have any clamps. Well, I had clamps, but once I put the clamps on, then they didn't fit in my pot. So that was out. So I'm going, okay, what else do I have? You know, what can I do? What can I use? What can I use? So then, just to stabilize it, I got the thick rubber bands. These were boiled a lot, so I don't know how strong they still are. Those are the ones that I used. And um, i got to put it on the edge over here. You won't be able to see. I have to put it on the edge so I can wrap this around. And I put that there. And then I put another one on the other end. I'm going to scoop this on the edge. So that at least temporarily stabilized it until I figured out what else I was going to do. Then um, I got some wire. We just had this. I'm not sure why we had it, but we had it in the garage, <laughs> and it was already starting to rust, and that's a good thing, because when you boil, when you boil this, the rust is released into the water, and that, that again does some kind of a reaction that is good. It's a good thing. So, I wrapped that around there a few times. Just to make it a little snug. And did it the other way. To make it <coughs> snug. <laughs> Was that so then I put water and I brought it to put that in I filled it up with water and I brought it to a boil and then I brought it down to a simmer just enough where it was moving around some movement in the water and I added a cup of white vinegar. Why? Again, I read that that helps, um, I forget what word they use, but anyway, the dyes that come out, I guess, stabilize the color and it adheres and stays better onto the paper. And that helps accomplish that. So I put the half, I mean, the cup of vinegar to this. And then I let it boil for uh, an hour and a half. And so that's what I'm going to go do now. Oh, and then I just, because of the copper thing, I mean the uh, rust thing, I just added more rusty things that I could find in the garage and threw anything that was rusty a little bit, threw it all in there just to add a little bit more hope that it would do something. I don't know if this contributed <laughs> to it being successful or if it did not. But again, I'm not I'm not going to um, do anything different because at least I had a result that I liked. So I'm just going to repeat what I did the first time and um, put all these things in there. So now I'm going to go boil. 
and then I will show you the result. Alrighty, so this is what it looks like when it is in the water, and I put a few, Oh, here's Sammy, say hi, I put a few more pages than I did last time, so to make sure that everything gets submerged, I am going to, <laughs> what a brick. I'm putting a brick there so that it makes sure that all of the papers are submerged in the water. And also I would suggest that when you're doing this, if your house is closed up, I would put the exhaust fan because I'm not a botanist. But maybe some of these fumes for some people might cause allergies or um, I don't even know if they're toxic. I honestly don't know. So what I do is I make sure that I have my exhaust fan on while I'm doing the boiling. And uh, all should go well. So I will show you what these boiled uh, papers ended up looking like once they are done. Okay, so it is now an hour and a half. I took it off the stove. I dismembered all of the crazy, creepy stuff and took it all off. Notice I used the word dismembered, but that's okay. So now that's all gone. Then I removed the, the entire block out and took off the wire. I... Um, emptied all of the hot water out, filled it up with cold water, and then put the block back in with the papers um, so that it could cool down a little bit. Now, I have not opened it yet, so I don't know if this worked. It's still pretty... Whoop, see the steam? It's still pretty, pretty warm in there. So I'll, I'll show a few as I open it up because it's hard with just one hand and see the reveal. Woo, woo, look at that. It's a little, it's a little warm. Owie, okay. <laughs> All right, so... First one, hello, it worked. Now, I can't do this with one hand, but then what you would do is I ran this over with water and just very gently, because there's residue from the plants and from all kinds of stuff. And so, do it gently because it is paper and it's all wet and... A few of them, I, I wasn't gentle enough, and I broke them on my original one. Um, so that's the next step you would do with just warm water. You do that until a lot of that goop is gone. But look at that one. Woohoo! I like it. Okay, let's do one more. Open it the other way. <gasps> Look at that, ladies. Engines. Mm-mm-mm. Look how pretty. Looks like I got some green on this one. I didn't get green last time with those leaves. So see, it's just it's different every time. You don't know exactly what you're going to get. And like I say, don't forget to be gentle because this can rip very easily. Alright. Don't mean to get you dizzy, but 
it's kind of hard to watch what I'm doing and watch what's in frame. <laughs> I don't know how you ladies do it. Okay, let's just do one more together and then I'll do the rest and come back. Oh! The pods. Well, it came out a little bit there. Not too, too much, but enough to distinguish what it is. And there's my leaves that had been eaten up. Don't make the mistake. I, I keep doing the mistake. Don't run your water fast because when you lift it up, you're putting all that pressure on the paper and it can tear. So don't do what I just did. <laughs> okay. Well, you get the idea. So I'm going to go ahead and do the rest of these. And then I'll come back and show you what they look like. Alright. So what I do to dry my pages is I lay some paper on um, a table and then I just lay them out and the paper just naturally the bottom paper just naturally absorbs a lot of the moisture and I flip them back and forth every so often um, if you have some way of drying them outside that'd be great the only problem is because of the paper is so heavy because of all the water in them I would not suggest hanging them because I'd be afraid that they would rip. So if you have a flat surface outside that you can lay them down on, um, that would be good. All my flat surfaces are accessible to my dogs. <laughs> so that's not going to work. But um, you can see how most of these, I just checked these this morning. I laid them out overnight and um, they're almost all dry tiny bit of dampness but just from looking at them from a distance you can see such a variation of color some are really light and some are very dark which is very interesting because they are all in the same pot together <laughs> so it doesn't really bleed that much from um, one plant to the other it pretty much stays that's why I was emphasizing to put as much weight as possible so that it doesn't just bleed out. All right, so once these are completely dry, then I will show you a close up of uh, these pages. Alrighty, so these are dry, and I'm really happy with how these came out. Um, this here is the Rose of Sharon, the one that was pink, that <laughs> turns blue. And I think this really came out pretty. It, it um, has a very watercolor look to it. Here's another one of the same flower. And here is the same flower. These were like the buds that were already dried up. I should say the flowers that were dried up and this is from the leaves are from the lilac bush this was still the Rose of Sharon the pink one and then I just threw some petals of the um, crepe myrtle And some more of the roses, Sharon. I used up all that was in my yard. I don't know if any more will bloom, but those were the last ones on my bush. <laughs> Look how beautiful this one came out. This is that plant, I wasn't too sure how you pronounce the Wagalia. And I just think it's gorgeous. It's so defined and it's so pretty. And various colors of green in there. It's just too bad that all the colors don't. In the back, I'm not really sure. Some of them 
went, I don't know if they're going through. Yeah, that one, this one went through. So there is a lot of dye in this one. Because of most of them, you know, it doesn't go through to the other side. But it's too bad that all the detail doesn't show up like in person. So that's why you need to do your own. This was those pods that was to the hyacinth bean. Came out kind of cool. Now this is a tree in the yard that I can't remember what it is. Uh, this is the first time I tried this one. But I really like it because it has a lot of um, green and orange and yellow. And I really like it. I'm going to have to double check with my husband. He might remember what it is. Because all the trees in our yard, we planted at some time or another. So we should know what they are. <laughs> and this, uh, these leaves, I'm going to have to double check the video and see which leaves I put on just like that. I, I can't remember exactly what these are. I have to figure out a way, maybe you guys can figure it out, of cataloging what goes into each signature. Um, you can't, I, I don't want to write on it, and even if I did, it'd probably boil away. Mm, I have to think about that. And that way, I wouldn't have to be guessing what all these plants are. Um, this is the canna, that large yellow one. And these are the leaves and the seeds from that same canna. Um, hydrangea leaves along with some of the hydrangea just crumbled up the flower. And some more hydrangea. This was the crepe myrtle that I put by itself. I like how that came out. And some more crepe myrtle. Now I believe this is the one that was um, the red one. So the red and the pink really no difference at all as far as the colors. This is the lilac bush and the lilac flower. Same plant, lilac. Some more of the crepe myrtle. And this is the sweet gum tree leaves. I really like how these really have such a variety of color. Now these leaves are just gorgeous in the fall. I mean they are bright bright red, they have bright bright orange and yellows. So as they change I'm going to um, put them in another boil book and see if the colors are different once they have changed. Right now these are all green and so once they get those beautiful fall colors I'm going to do it again and see if there is a different reaction. Same tree. And this is the hydrangea. No, excuse me, crepe myrtle. All right, so you've seen from the beginning to the end everything I know. <laughs> There's a lot more to learn, a lot more to experiment with, other things to put in the water, other things to prepare your papers with. I just don't know about them. I mean, I've read about them, but they just kind of confuse me. So I just went with what was very, very simple. And all you have to remember is to not let all the water in your pot evaporate. <laughs> Check it every... 20 minutes to a half hour 
bring it back up so that you're at least covering all of your pages. Make sure you, at least I put in the cup of vinegar um, to set the colors on here. And when you rinse them off, um, in the video I said to use warm water when you're rinsing them. That was a mistake. I don't. I didn't mean that. It's cool water. And make sure your faucet is not full blast. Have it more of a trickle because these are very delicate from being folded and boiled so that if you have your water coming down um, really um, at a high velocity when it hits it, that weight is going to literally, when you try to pick it up, it's going to tear it. So have your water just as a trickle, have it cool, and have a prepared place of some kind of paper or cloth or whatever it is you're going to do to lay these out flat. And they dry pretty flat. This is it. I haven't gone in and tried to flatten them anymore. They dry pretty cool. So I hope that this tutorial was um, helpful in you trying this for the first time and um, if you learn any tips and tricks you want to pass along please let us know. Those of you that are in my group I hope that you will try this and show pictures and make your own videos. Um, in our group um, Trashy Junk Journals we encourage that at least 50% of your products be recycled. So even though I bought my paper, all of my flowers obviously are recycled. <laughs> so um, I still consider this a project within our group. So I hope I've inspired you to try something new. And don't be afraid to do things that you've never done before.